It's the August Power Query Challenge with start stop times and working out how we split rows into hours and days and flip that data around. Thanks to everybody who's taken part. I'll do some shout outs as we go through the video and at the end, but here's my solution. Let's go. Here's the scenario. We have a table of data with staff and the start date and start time of a task and then the stop date and stop time and it's in an awful format and then we've also got this little filter where we want to exclude but the word exclude isn't typed properly so we're going to handle that and ultimately we want to spit out some data by month in the rows and by name in the columns and then number of hours worked. Okay, so we're going to do Power Query to convert all this data. Right, so I'm starting off by right clicking in my table and saying get data from table slash range. If you don't have that option, then you just go to the data tab and you click on from table slash range. Okay, so right click, get data from table slash range. Okay. So here's my data and I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to collapse this window just to make it easier for everybody to see. So here we are. The first thing I'm going to handle is this exclude. Okay. Now what I would do in order to force it to be safe is first of all, right click, transform uppercase. Quite a few people did lowercase. I wonder what that says about our psychology, which one we choose, okay, but uppercase. And then I could say right click, text filter does not equal, or I can simply click on this and untick, but probably the safer way here, right click, text filter does not equal. Okay, so that's good. We got rid of the excludes. Couple of interesting ways, uh, Alejandra Horvath and Jonathan Worrell, Okay, they use comparer or ordinal case ignore. Let me just show you that. I've probably said that totally wrong. I can never remember which one it is. So rather than doing this, you could go like this, right click, text value does not contain. Okay, so it doesn't contain exclude, for example. But you can also put in here a comma and see it says comparer as nullable function. And if you start typing, comparer, you'll see ordinal ignore case, okay? So comparer dot ordinal ignore case. And then when I press enter after that, it'll do the filtering, but it doesn't really matter whether you put in lowercase, uppercase, okay? It doesn't really matter, it just works. So comparer dot ordinal ignore case. I couldn't remember what that was called. Um, awesome, nice little tip. Okay, next little phase is that I want to combine this start date and start time and this stop date and stop time. Okay, and I could do this in a few different steps. There's nothing sort of wrong with doing that. Um, but what I'm going to do is go add column, custom column. Okay, and I'm going to combine the two in a custom column right in a formula. So I just want to check this out. I want to check out if what happens if I try and get the start time from here. And this is where I realized that I actually want to use the function um, time from time from text. Okay, time from text. And then I refer to the start time. I can just close the bracket. I want to go okay, I'll get an error. Okay, this is error because it's, and if I click next to the error, it says we cannot convert the value 1500 to type text. So what I'm going to do is go back to my change type step, click on these two columns holding control. Okay, and then a little trick, I want to change them both to text. If you hold um, control, this is hit and miss whether this works or not. Hold control, click on it again, so now both are selected, you can see both columns, and then click text. 
and replace the current one. Now both of them change at the same time, okay, which is pretty cool. So this column, ah, now it's working apart from this one. So what's wrong here? It's the 700. It needs to be 0, 0,700. Okay, so I am going to edit that, click on my little cog here, go in here and say, right, it's not just the start time then. I'll do shift enter and just to make this nice and obvious, shift enter. So shift and enter does that indenting. I need to pad out the start up to four characters long. So it is text pad Okay, let me just make a space so the IntelliSense kicks in. Text. Okay, never type the dot. Remember that when you're writing Power Query. The dot just gets in the way and doubles up the functions. So never type the full stop. So text pad start. Okay, open the brackets. That's my value that I want to pad out. I want to pad it out with four characters. And the four characters in turn... If there was any spaces, so if there's any three characters, pad the start with a zero. Okay. And then when they say OK, it now works. Beautiful. Right. And we'll just call this, um, let's call this start, start date time. All right. And I just want to add on the date at the start of it. So right at the start here. I will say I want the start date and OK and click OK. And now we have it. We have our start date and time. Awesome. Now I could change that, add a change type step, but I'm going to come back to this in a second. So this is going to be called um, add start date time. All I'm going to do is copy this formula, so control C, click the FX, okay, it will add a new step, I'll just paste in there, and I want to refer to, rather than the filtered row step, I need to refer to the add start date time step, okay, and then this is going to be the stop date time, each stop date and stop time. Press enter. And now I've got a new column with a stop date and time in. Okay, just name this, add stop date time. Beautiful. Okay. And now I'll just make the, these columns, I can click on them and make them uh, date time. You don't really have, have to actually do that at this stage, but I will. Now, I want to subtract one from the other. At this stage, a lot of people did something like this, and then they broke it out into, into the day difference. They did a day subtraction, or they, they broke it out into the days. I'm going to do it at the time level. So with those two selected, I'm going to say time subtract okay and it's subtracted like this and then I want to say right click transform total hours so that's the total hours between those two periods right then I've got a right little function I want to create a row for every hour and then I can just count the rows to give me the total hours by date period so this is the function, custom column, okay. Lots of people did this, okay, list dot, don't press the dot, sorry, that's not what everybody else did, I'm saying don't press the dot, list dates, okay, so list dot dates, and then they pick the start date and the number of days, okay. I'm doing it, okay, list date times, open the bracket, OK, and it starts at the start date time. And then the number is the number of hours we've just created. So the subtraction column. And the increment is hashtag 
duration, zero days, one hour, zero minutes, zero seconds. So that'll then just increment it at that level. And then I just need a bracket on the end. Okay, let me just break that out a bit. So shift enter, okay, and then shift enter just so you can see it a bit easier. And I click okay. And it creates a list of 543 items for every hour, okay, between those elements. And I can now expand this out to new rows. So this is now pretty good. I've got this custom column, which I can just call, oh, it doesn't really matter actually, I don't actually need to name anything yet. Um, let's call it um, date time, for example. Okay, so we've got this nice column. We've got the staff over here. And I'm pretty much done because all I need really is staff name. Okay. I need this date time column. And for what I want to do, I actually need one more column. So it doesn't really matter which one I need. I'll show you what I mean in a second. Well, actually, let me show you this. If I go right click, um, remove other columns. Okay. I've pretty much got what I need because I've got, I can now do a pivot via transform, pivot column. So I want the staff names across the top. So I want to pivot the staff names. They go across the top. And then it says, what do I want for the values? Well, I haven't got anything, but if I put in here count and click OK, I've lost the dates, right? So what I actually want to do is when I go to the removed other columns, I just want to keep any other column. It doesn't matter which one I pick, any other one. I'll just go subtraction, okay? It's going to disappear anyway. Now, when I pivot this column, okay, pivot column um, using date time, sorry, subtraction is going to be the values. It's going to do a count and I click OK. There we go. We've got all the dates. Ah, oh, but I've got, hmm, what could I do instead of that? Because I've got all these individual dates, right? So I go back a step, okay? When I remove the other columns, I'm just gonna convert all these, right click, transform, okay, month, end of month, insert. Okay, so that was, these are all now end of months and I'll just change this to a date. And you can go back and change the date formatting and stuff to be a bit neater about your steps. And then when I pivot the columns, we've got our answer. Okay. You could do a group by and then pivot them, but there isn't actually any need because the pivot, there's the grouping, the counting itself. And that's it. Okay. That's the answer. It's pretty cool. Um, lots of people used functions. So um, to do some of this stuff, uh, Bill Size, um, Stefan, Sergey, uh, Melanie, who else was in here? Igor, um, a whole bunch of people. Um, Melissa, everybody did like either functions or nice little nested options. It's amazing how people approach this. Lots of brilliant different ways of doing this. Andy Napper used fuzzy merging in here. You want to check out his solution. There's no right or wrong. Okay, this is just the way I did it. But everybody got to the right answer and everybody's way worked. So there's just a hundred different ways. Nobody really had a common way. Lots of people split it into months uh, and then the days and worked out the extra hours in the columns and then collapsed that. But it's all good. All right. Do you find that useful? Did you learn a few things? Let me know. Hope you're enjoying these challenges. I always learn a lot. Hope you do too. Um, we'll catch you later.